I have already logged into my EC2 dashboard and we are going to see how to start our own first launch auto scaling uh, configurations. So first step is click on your uh, launch configuration. Remember launch configuration is a prerequisite for starting your auto scaling. So when you click on launch configurations automatically uh, it goes ahead and where are, where are we? Are we in the right track? Yep. It says uh, create your scaling group. So in your scaling group remember we are going to input our minimum max desired information. So click on that one and it is asking you do you want to create launch configuration? Yes. I'm going to create a launch configuration first instance types, SSH keys and all those things are we are going to select and it is asking me what type of uh, AMI that I want to choose right now. I am in the launch configuration page, the big blue button that you see on the screen, if you click on that it takes you to the next page where it gives you the choice of uh, multiple AMIs. As usual we are going to use the Red Hat Linux instance, click on select and then it is asking me what are the type of instances. So let us choose the T2 micro itself for our learning experience in production or real time you choose the appropriate one. So go ahead and click on next configure details. And then here let us create a name for our launch configuration. Let us say Galaxy. Looks like I forgot the spelling of Galaxy. Galaxy ASG auto scaling demo. Let me copy that. I might have to use that. And let me launch it with the role. Remember yesterday we created this role EC2 full access to S3 Galaxy EC2 demo. This role has access to my S3 buckets and I should be able to read some configuration from the S3 buckets. So I'm going to click on advanced details here because this is going to get a little bit interesting. I'm going to try it myself once more and uh, I don't want to enable detail monitoring, keep the kernel ID, I don't have any customized kernel in my machine images so leave it as default and again I don't want any customized uh, RAM that is customized for the kernel so keep it as default. Whereas when it comes to user, I'm going to launch a web server like yesterday has been bash and then this is being an um, Linux, Red Hat Linux, this should work. So. HTTPD system CTL enable HTTPD and um, I'm going to try if S3 will work here by default in the booting configuration itself. I'm just going to try it along with you guys. There is an S3 command which will sync two folders. So we are going to use that to copy some data from my S3 bucket. I'm going to quickly go over to my uh, S3 bucket to find the bucket name. I actually forgot the bucket name so let's go ahead and pick it up from there. Meanwhile I know the destination where it needs to be copied. So the command is sync source and destination. So that is what we are going to do here. Slash var share www slash html and I want it to sync in this destination. And I just set up a simple uh, website or uh, what you call it as uh, content yesterday. So I'm going to copy it, copy all the content uh, from um, the source and destination. So I'm just going to try that here. Okay, so from this bucket, copy everything what is underneath that bucket and put it here. That's what we are going to say. Let us see if it, this works while the boot itself. If not, this part will definitely work. We know that that is the above three commands will definitely work. If this also works, we should be able to see a different image other than the default one. So let us add as it is, assign a public IP address, leave it as it is, click here to go and add storage. Let us leave it as defaults. We don't want to add any storage, additional storage. Here is where you usually add your data volumes or state management volumes. But let us not do that right now. Let us go ahead and click on configure security groups and uh, I, am, I don't have any specific extraordinary configuration. It is just needs port 22 and port 80. So I'm going to use an existing security group which allows port 22 and port 80 because we are going to run a web server. And in case if we need to troubleshoot something, we have needed port 22. 
but in production you most probably would not do this so do that appropriately for your IP address click on review so your launch configuration is uh, ready next is auto scaling group so it reviews all those things say for example your user data is a hashed that is a 64 bit uh, base 64 encoded that is in other words it is easy to be transported to all the instances and the summary of everything is listed here your storage your security and all those things so all that we have to do is click on create configuration next and it's asking me my keypad click on the keypad that we already have click on create configuration so automatically it comes to the next step remember uh, we did a launch configuration first that is a prerequisite the number of uh, uh, type of instances the machine and all those things when it comes to auto scaling group we are going to say the min and max and all those things so I copied this and then I'm just going to put auto scaling demo itself here as well and then start with I'm going to say two instances and I'm going to say which all, all the subnets I'm going to choose both the subnets so this is how you distribute between multiple availability zones remember in Mumbai only we have two availability zones so it gives me only the option of two subnets if you are in Virginia or some other uh, region where there are multiple availability zones it, you can choose all the subnets created under those availability zones so click on advanced details this is where your uh, load balancing uh, happens if you have a load balancer you can uh, enable that we will see that when you look at the load balancer classes as of now leave it as it is you don't have to touch anything here at all just click, uh, leave it as defaults and click on configure scaling policies so we are going to the final bit of configuration next so when you come to scaling uh, policies Amazon gives you an offer uh, keep it at the initial size remember we, we are going to start two instances it is saying do you want to keep it at its initial size if you choose this only the two will stay constantly all the time and if something goes wrong with the two it will maintain only those two it, uh, it will start another one or it will not increase beyond the two and all those things but if you click on this one you get a lot of configuration say for example scale between two and four so my instances can give in, go between two and four and what is my scaling policy here oh great I'm going to wait a second I'm going to use this option that is when you will get you get the small twisty option here right if you click on that then only you will get the increase group size and decrease group size both options so when I say increase group size, nothing but I'm scaling out. So in other words, when I want to increase my scale out, I'm going to take action when my uh, ta -da -ta -da, create an alarm. We need an alarm so that we can monitor the CPU. So we don't have an alarm configuration. So send a configuration to this is my different email addresses. I've just configured for. Uh, monitoring I'm going to say when the average CPU of my server is going to greater than or equal to 80 percentage notify me and if it is going to be greater than or equal to for 80 percentage for consecutively five minutes then notify me this is the name of my alarm so that is the alarm I am creating and you just click on create alarm and then so Execute when you come back automatically that alarm name is configured here. It's you see here breaches alarm hold when CPU is greater than or 80 percentage a notification will be sent to me in email and it will be sent to the auto scaling group also. So you say take action add one instance when my instance is 80 percentage CPU. So that is as simple as that. You just don't have to change it. That is warm up in the sense it will wait for 300 seconds before adding another instance how much time you want to wait if you want additional instances so when it comes to decrease scaling group again we don't have an alarm here so click on alarm that is add new alarm that you see here you click on that it will again ask you what is the configuration that you want instead of uh, greater than I'm going to say if it is lesser than or equal to 30 percentage of a CPU and then for a period of five minutes consecutively then send me an email and also send an auto scaling notification event so click on you see here automatically it changes to 30 percentage if I just change it to say for example 25 you can see the number here 
on the right hand side as well change so that is how it works click on create alarm automatically an alarm will be created and it will be tagged to my scaling policy it is tagged here and I'm going to say remove one instance when your uh, CPU is lesser than 25 percentage for consecutively 300 seconds or five minutes so that's it you just go ahead and click on configure notifications so you whom you want to notify and uh, add a notification I already have set it up an EC2 monitor that is another email address it will say, uh, receive an email when any of these things happen and not a problem we can add any of you uh, your email addresses also when there's a launch when there's a terminate when there is a fail when there is a fail to launch and all those things so click on configuring tags next step so let me see if I have copied it home I think I have not copied it properly but anyway Galaxy AS demo that should do good and click on review and you get the summary of all the things the minimum size that is the desired size minimum and then maximum and then you have the grace period how much time you want to wait and then when you want to uh, I mean this this is your scaling policy increase with this one decrease with this one and then you have the tags and notifications say for example when launch terminate fail to launch and all those things send an email so create an auto scaling group click on this button and Amazon starts the big process of starting spinning up those two servers trying to set up the instance role trying to set up the configurations and all those things let us click on close here uh, we can go ahead and check the logs in the main dashboard itself so I have opened one more tab here it's not nothing magic here just one more tab so that we can go to our EC2 instances page and then see uh, see as of now there is nothing here empty I'm going to hit refresh and see anything is happening now so you can see here there are two instances that are being spun up as we speak because we set in our auto scaling there are two servers that are required and then two servers are starting and they are still in initializing stage and we also have a public IP address let me just uh, copy this and keep it ready and put it in your window as well this is one public IP address uh, it is going here and let me just copy the other public IP address it might take a bit of time because as you can see it is just now initializing it might not be ready we need to give some time for the systems to work and do the copy and uh, in configurations so meanwhile uh, we will just go ahead and uh, go to our auto scaling uh, dashboard and see what are the things that is important here so you can see here in the when I go to the auto scaling that is on the left hand side that you see auto scaling here and then auto scaling group I just made a typo here let me see if I can correct it uh, no it is not allowing me to correct the name probably to correct allow me to correct the tags here but not the name of the group anyway uh, you just next time be careful when you're configuring the name and set it up properly so it's a nice little summary of all the things that we have done here you have the entire details basic details and activity history is what are the events that has happened so far we launched two instances and it is uh, coming up successfully that is launching of the instances has been successful if you terminate or anything uh, it will show up here and your scaling policies the most interesting actions have, are shown here uh, you can add additional policies as you said you can have any combination of policy not just on the CPU you can keep on adding multiple policies uh, here and then here is the scheduled actions on the right hand side extreme when you click on that you can click on uh, scheduled action it will ask you what is the uh, minimum capacity what is the desired capacity what is the max capacity how often do you want it to happen do you what time you want to run it and remember that it is all in UTC time so you need to calculate for your time zone or UTC time and do it appropriately so morning 9 to 5 you can run some servers and shut down automatically by using it this one something like every day it will keep on running every day at the same time or something like that so that is how you do a scheduled scaling and you have other types of scaling uh, event driven scaling using the scaling policies so monitoring it uh, should if we have our healthy status count all those things you should come up here when as soon as our servers come online um, there must be still uh, checking things initializing and all those things going on so we don't see anything here uh, it might take a minute we need to give some things to work 
I mean, we need to give some time for things also to work. So, and what else is there? Instances again, it is a <clears throat> quick dashboard, and you can see here um, when you are doing a health check, we spoke about uh, two status health checks. One is in service and not equal to running. So any of them is failing, it will be marked as unhealthy here, and it will be automatically failing. Also, you can see here automatically my browser has uh, picked up the change and you can see here it says uh, test page automatically picked up for one of the browser, one of the server is already online. So next server should also be online now. You can see here I just clicked on refresh button automatically our test page has come up. Uh, looks like the S3 command did not execute. But that should not be a problem. It's just a configuration we can do it at post boot also. The logic here is we started two servers and automatically the two servers have spun up and then those two servers are come online with the HTTP servers that we are seeing right now. So uh, since our run scaling event is configured for CPU, we might not be able to trigger the CPU of 80% workload. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my instances and manually turn one down. That is in other words, I'm going to turn off one instance that is shut down or terminate one instance and see whether auto scaling spins up another one. So I'm going to go to my EC2 dashboard and select one server and click on terminate. and the terminate action is going on. So meanwhile, uh, it, uh, auto scaling should have picked up the event and then it will start uh, not, uh, triggering another instance. Let me just go to my uh, auto scaling dashboard. So let me just go ahead and see here, see uh, I'm in the activity history of our auto scaling group and you can see here the termination event has been successfully picked up and triggered here. So once the auto scaling uh, picks up, it will start launching another instance to maintain the desired capacity at two. That event will trigger anytime now. So I just refresh the screen and you can see here there is one more instance that is getting to spin up that is mentioned as not yet in service. It is coming up online. Meanwhile, if I go to my EC2 dashboard and refresh my screen by hitting the refresh button, I should be able to see one more instance in the pending state or running. As you can see here, there is uh, one more server that is coming up online here in the running state and it is getting initialized. And I would expect the name also set up uh, to the uh, same tag. Let us see once it finishes, let us see what is the tag. If I select on the server and copy this public IP address and put it on the chat window as well as on the screen, we should be able to see when it is completing the activity. Oh great, you can see there automatically the tag is also, if you can see my screen, you can uh, see that the tag has also been automatically updated for the third server as well and uh, our web server configurations should kick in any time. So this is the simplest way we can uh, trigger auto scaling event and uh, test it how auto scaling is works. If you have any questions I can take them now.